Today we're going to take a look at how you can use random number generators in vPython. Uh, there's a few reasons you might want to do this. For one, uh, there are some random processes that we might want to model in physics. Um, I'm currently working on a video series about random walks, and those require uh, using random numbers. Another neat use for them is that you can use random numbers to test your code that you write to get an idea of how robust it is, how reliable it is. And fortunately, GlowScript comes with a built-in random number generator. It is called random. So this is a function that takes no arguments. And what it does is it generates a random number between zero and one. So if I do print random like this, like we've seen before, and I run the program with my control two, uh, it's going to print out a random number between 0 and 1. So here it's 0 0.45. If I run the program again, I get a different result. So basically, it's uh, it, it hides all the magic of random number generators from you, uh, but basically it takes some sort of uh, random seed value, transforms it until it spits out something like this. And you can keep doing this over and over again, and it'll produce more and more random numbers for you. Um, you can even see that it changes within the program. Uh, if I do a loop, so if I do for i in range, uh, let's go 0 to 20, this thing will give me 20 random numbers between, again, between 0 and 1. And if I scroll through here, you see I've got 20 random numbers, and they're all between 0 and 1. And that sounds great. That is a, that is a neat thing to do except you're not always looking for random numbers to be between 0 and 1. Maybe you're looking to get random numbers between 0 and 100, or between 50 and 100. Um, this random function here is still useful to you. You just have to apply a little transformation. The way it works is uh, if I want to uh, create a random number Let's say between, uh, actually let's make it generic. Let's make it between A and B. All right, so let's say A was one and B was 100. What I can do is I can still use this random number generator. And I can use this as, as in terms of thinking about where in the range between A and B I'm selecting. Now, of course, the way you get a range is you take the difference between the two numbers. So if I take random, times b minus a, I'm going to get a random number between, uh, let's see, so that's going to be between, let's see, if this thing is 0, I'm going to get a 0, and if it turns into a 1, I'm going to get 99. So then I can offset that by adding a. And so this is a neat little trick for getting a random number. All you do is take the minimum value and add to it a random number between 0 and 1, times the range. So the way to, to kind of reconstruct this formula in your head is to think about the extreme cases. If random returns a zero at the lowest possible end, then this whole term goes away and I'm left with a. So my minimum possible value is a. If random returns a value of one, then this thing uh, is just equal to b minus a. This thing is a one. So you've got a plus b minus a, so those a's cancel out, and you're left with b, you're left with 100. So this little construction here gets you a random number between 1 and 100. Uh, let's comment this out, and let's convince ourselves that this works by running it. So I should get a single number between 1 and 100. Of course, it doesn't work if I don't tell it to print anything. <clears throat> so let's add in a print statement. There we go. There we go. So I get a number between 1 and 100. Uh, again, if I repeat this, it'll give me a different number, and they'll all come out to be between 1 and 100. I could even give myself um, a nice little for loop. Uh, let's go with 0 to 20 again. And the i there is the, the variable i there is not really significant. It's just counting my loop. And so lo and behold, I get um, I get random numbers all between 1 and 100. And of course, I could change these. I could make this between 90 and 100. Control two, and here I'm getting more, uh, you know, a, a, a narrower range of numbers between 90 and 100, which is pretty cool. Now, to get a little technical, this random number distribution is uniform, meaning you're equally likely to get a random number 
uh, between zero and one, it, to get any number between zero and one. Um, similarly here, you're likely to get, you're equally likely to get any number between 90 and 100 or one and 100 or between A and B, whatever you set A and B to be. Um, there are of course other uh, probability distributions out there. Most notable is the normal distribution. I'm going to set up a, a way to calculate a normal distribution in another video because that one's a little more complicated. Today we're just learning the basics of this random function. But I want to take a couple minutes and work in one other thing you might want to do. So let's say you need to generate a whole lot of random numbers throughout your code and you don't want to have to keep writing this line over and over and over again. What you can do is you can define a function. Now I'm going to have another video all about function definitions. This is just one example. We'll go into more detail about it. But basically when you want to define a function you use the def command. So that stands for define, meaning I want to define a new thing called, let's call it uniform, shall we? And uniform is going to have two function arguments, meaning I'm going to have to give it two arguments A and B. Now these two are not, um, it's not going to be the same A and B that I have here. So actually maybe I should give them different names. Uh, what, actually why don't we call them X1 and X2. The names don't actually mean anything, like, like you can call them whatever you like. Um, and then you put a colon, kind of like you do with a loop to indicate that you're defining a new block of function. And so what I could do would be to set a random number, call it r, equal to, and then just use this formula, x1 plus random times x2 minus x1. Oops, I need my parentheses. There we go. Yeah, so I've got minimum plus random number between 0 and 1, maximum minus minimum. Now I'm going to test this in just a second, but I, I, I'm wondering, can you get the same result if you switch X, the minimum and the maximum? We'll try that out in just a minute. Um, if, if not, there's a way to fix it. Uh, then we're, we need to tell the function what value to return to the user, so we're going to do return r. So now that we've made this function definition, anytime I use the word uniform, it's going to reference these values. So let's comment out this bit. There we go. And what I can do is I can say uh, print uh, uniform, and now it knows what a uniform distribution is, and I can put in two arguments. So let's do um, a uniform distribution. Let's make an instance. Let's go between pi and 2 pi. And then let's do another one, print a uniform random variable between negative 10 and negative 5. Let's see if that works. All right, so I should get two numbers out now. This one is between pi and 2 pi. This is between negative 10 and negative 5. And I can just put in any pair of numbers that I want. So I could have, um, I could have negative 100 to 100. Pretty nice range. There we go. Pretty cool stuff. Um, now I'm going to test this out. Will this thing still work if I flip the order of these things? Because I don't want to leave you with a possibly broken code. That still works. Uh, let's try another couple of scenarios. I think it'll work because you're basically subtracting from the maximum instead of adding to the minimum. Um, yes, that seems to be working. Let's try 10 and zero just to be safe. I think that'll test, test enough cases. Okay, so I think that works. I think that actually works. If you flip those, you don't need to try to organize them by, uh, by maximum and minimum, uh, which is nice because you might hand this off to somebody else and they're not as familiar with the code as you are and they might flip those around. Uh, so that's a basic intro to random numbers and a little bit about function definitions. Um, in a future video, we're gonna take a look at getting more complicated um, uh, probability distributions and we'll take a look uh, a little bit more formally at function definitions. Before I go, there's one other thing I should probably emphasize, and that's you can store these random numbers. So every time you call this random function, it's a different number. But if you want to access the same random number over and over again, you can store it in a variable. So when I do r equals this, that r is going to return the same random number each time. So for example, if I uh, put in a equals uh, uniform between 1 and 2, I can do print a, print two times a, print uh, 10 times a. Actually, let's do factors of 10. That's easier. So let's do a, 100a, and 10a. 
it'll recall this A as the same number each time uh, because it's saving it in that. It's not re-randomizing it each time. Uh, I can't tell you how many times in my life I have issued a pring command instead of a print command. Maybe I'm hankering for pringles. Um, so when I run this, yeah, so it gives me, it, it's referencing the same number each time, 1.46, 114.6, 146. So it's referencing that same number each time. It's not re-randomizing A every time I call it. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.